Okay. Okay. Um, and launching in, in three, three, two, two one. one. Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 27 of the Horizon series. Now this week we're going to have a look at the booster release mechanism. Uh, back in episode 6 we actually saw this when we tested it as a static load to see if we could hold down the, the whole force of the booster. But uh, this week we want to see if we can actually release it. Now we're also going to have a look at the construction of the booster tubes that are made out of carbon fiber. Wait, wait, where are you going? Where are you going? Come back here. So one of the first things we needed to do was to modify the test stand to be able to hold the full length release head. To do that we are adding an extension below the stand rather than try and raise the entire lever upwards. The extension is just made out of three blocks of wood. The wood's going to be in compression for these loads so it should be strong enough. To secure the release head we attach the flange that will be used on the actual launcher. We're also securing this with the actual mounting screws so that we can test the entire mechanism and the loads that it will be subject to. With the stand set up, we give the release mechanism a try. The idea is that the force exerted by the nozzle when under pressure should lift the primary lever and release the nozzle. We want to know what force is needed to do that. I'm going to be referring to kilos of weight equivalent rather than newtons when describing forces as that's easier for people to relate to. At full pressure, the booster will exert about 700 kilos on the release head. That's like hanging a Formula 1 car from this mechanism. So here is the first test. We bring the load up to around 750 kilos and the release mechanism is absolutely stuck. And no matter how much we pull on it, it just won't budge. That is as stuck as it can be. We suspected this may happen and there is an easy fix. Here is a diagram of what's going on. Here's the nozzle. This is the nozzle seat and here's the primary lever with its pin. Now here's the contact point between the nozzle and the primary lever. The angle between these two is important as it determines the direction of the forces on the lever. If the angle is too shallow, not enough force is transferred to opening the lever and the whole thing just seizes up, which is what we have now. At the moment, this angle is about 5 degrees. For the next test, we machine down the nozzle and lever contact point to about 30 degrees. With a greater angle, more force is transferred to the lever and it can open more easily. This is 30 degree angle. When we run the test again, the lever now releases easily, but the force required to hold it in place is much greater. Here I'm holding it closed with my hands trying to judge how much force is required. I'm guessing it's around 10 kilos when a load of about 500 kilos is applied to the nozzle. So we machine down the contact angle back to around 20 degrees to reduce that force. And let's go again. I'll hold it this time. This results in the primary lever still easily opening, but the load required to keep it closed is closer to around 5 kilos. Okay, that's good. Now it's time to make a secondary lever. It will reduce the force from 5 kilos down to perhaps a couple of hundred grams. This lever is also made from rectangular steel section. An angle grinder with a cutoff wheel is the tool of choice for this. Here we are again, building water rockets and needing to cut structural steel. What are we getting ourselves into? So here's the secondary lever ready to be fitted. To mount this lever, we 3D printed a mount that has a steel pin through it where the lever can pivot. We cannot put any screws through the central pipe because this pipe will have a high pressure hose going through the middle of it to supply air to the sustainer. The printed mount will have a locating screw though that will prevent it from sliding or rotating around the pipe, but it will only partially penetrate the pipe wall. To hold the secondary lever closed, we add a small tertiary lever made from aluminium that can be easily retracted by the servo motor, and it really only needs a few dozen grams to pull it open. To make sure the lever doesn't drop away by itself, uh, it has a small spring to keep it in place. The whole lever is again held in place with a similar 3D printed mount. The servo motor is also attached with 3D printed mounts. The servo motor must be located all the way at the bottom of the entire pipe because it just doesn't fit in the space between the booster segments. 
And that's actually the reason for this long and narrow release arrangement, because it needs to be able to fit between the booster segments, where there's only about a 60mm wide gap. So let's have a look how the whole thing fits together. Now the way this works is here we've got a standard nozzle, and here is the actual, uh, well this is the prototype of the staging mechanism that will lock into the top of it. Uh, but for now, for testing, we just have a, a little nozzle. Um, so the way this works, it's very easy. Uh, the servo controls this tertiary lever that when it pulls it back, secondary lever drops and that allows the primary lever to open and the nozzle to come out. So setting that up to lock it is very easy. Uh, now it's ready to go. So let's have a look at it in action. So we've just got a little control box. This is actually going to be part of the uh, main controller, but this is just for testing. So we hook in our remote trigger. It's all buried here. Turn it on. Oops. Now it's on. We can arm it and then uh, it's armed and we're ready to release. We just press the button and that drops the secondary lever, releasing the primary. This is actually opened by the pressure, uh, by the nozzle pulling out and automatically pulls that open. So we'll see that in a minute. And then to reset it, turn it on, returns the tertiary lever and we can lock it in place. Now it's ready to go again. It's time to test it now for real on the test stand. Here we're attaching the release mechanism to the flange to get it ready for testing. And that then gets screwed into place. For our first test, we're only applying a load of about 230 kilos. We want to make sure that the lever will open over a wide range of loads. Okay, and dynamic release. Three, two, one. This test was successful and the lever let go of the nozzle. For the second test, we crank it up to the full load. Whether it's the piston. The reason for the dropping load, we believe is due to the wood slowly compressing. Going in three, two, one. This time it's a little more violent. And again at the maximum load. Okay, and launching in three, two, one. We're running two types of tests here. One is for the various loads and the other for repeatability. Here are a couple more tests from different angles. Uh, three, two, one. So we're quite happy how that works. Uh, we're uh, quite confident that we can hold the rocket down now and also release it. Now we're probably going to do a couple of minor tweaks to it. We're going to put a blast deflector around the servo motor and we're going to replace the wire between the tertiary lever and the servo motor with uh, something like tiger tail. So next we're going to have a look at a short montage of the construction of the three carbon fiber tubes that are going into the booster. You've seen this process before with the test pressure chamber. So if you want to have a look at the details of how that was made, have a look at that video. But anyway, let's have a look at that now.
So that's the three inner liner tubes rolled and trimmed. Now we still have a couple of coats to put on the inside of the epoxy, that's just to try and seal it up a little bit better. Then we have to sand the outside and also uh, we're going to apply another coat of epoxy on the outside before the sleeve goes on. Now each of these weighs about 560 grams, so they're fairly light, uh, but yeah they still have the outer sleeve to go over the top of it. Here's an interesting observation when we put the camera inside of the tube. You can see halfway along the tube there are a couple of patches where the light shines through. This is because the inner fiberglass liner overlaps in this area and that slightly increases the diameter. When the two wraps of carbon fiber go around the fiberglass, the circumference is very slightly larger in this area and the carbon fibers just happen to line up with each other, letting light through the gaps in between. The strength will still be the same though. So that's it for this video. We're actually getting some rockets ready now for a high power launch that's coming up uh, next month. Uh, we're, gonna, we're not going to fly any Horizon components there, uh, but we do want to fly the Nova rocket again at higher pressure. Uh, we're also going to fly Dark Shadow. Uh, that hasn't been out for a while, so we're going to try that at a higher pressure. And finally, we also want to fly Lumpy uh, on an H motor that we haven't had a chance to yet uh, for about a year now. So hopefully that'll get off the ground. Uh, then when we come back, we're going to do another video on a slightly different water rockets topic, and then we'll get back to Horizon again. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Okay, let's try it. Okay. Uh, we're, also get, we're also going to have a look at the booster tube. So the carbon is like, hey, wait, where are you going? Okay. So I need to be looking at you. Perfect. We're going to do that again. I just do several takes and then pick. The, obviously, this isn't as <laughs> easy as I thought. Uh, and try pulling it out. I noticed it sort of went off to one side. You probably don't have much control, but try and pull it out straight. Okay, let's have to back up. And also this week, we're also going to have a look at the construction of the booster tubes that are made out of carbon fiber. That was perfect. All right.